Hey guys, welcome! Today let's talk about a simple visual cue to help us breathe more diaphragmatically. We want to use our diaphragm to breathe. And I got a simple little technique that we can use to do so. But before we get into that, we're talking about breathing here, right? Super, super important. If we don't breathe within three minutes time, <clears throat> We're pretty much goners, right? We have to breathe and we have to breathe regularly. But the quality of our breath really can lead to a better quality of life. I'm not joking you here. Breathing literally affects every aspect of our anatomy. It affects our biochemistry, the chemical reactions that occur within our body. Breathing affects our biophysiology, the way we can move and adapt within our environment. It also affects our psychology, the way we think and interpret things. All can be affected by our breathing. Massively, massively important and an aspect of our health all too often forgotten. And so we're talking about it today here. All right. So because breathing is so massively important and using the diaphragm is so massively important, let's talk about the diaphragm real quick. The diaphragm is a simple muscle I would say that it's probably one of the most important muscles in the human body. And it's muscle is kind of shaped like this. And so when we use or contract our diaphragm, it flattens out. This is why when we use our diaphragm to breathe, people call it a belly breath. Because when we flatten this out, it pushes visceral tissue and organs out of the way for that very critical function of breathing. When it flattens out like this, it allows our lungs to fully come down and expand so you get a full, deep, complete breath. Very, very essential. If we're not using our diaphragm to breathe, we're getting shallow breaths. And these shallow breaths show the mind that we are in a stressed state. We don't want that. We, we're chronically stressed as it is. We don't need any more to add to our table, right? So let's breathe more diaphragmatically. And we're going to do it with a simple visual cue. So before we start the exercise, all you need is some sort of elongated thing that we can place upon our midsection. I've got a, a water bottle, I've got a foam roller here, and I've got a detergent bottle with a little bit of detergent left in it. It doesn't matter what you have. Something simple, something you can use throughout the house. You don't have to buy anything here, all right? Real simple stuff we're talking about. Then I just want you to lie down. Relax, get in a comfortable position, bend your knees, and then you're gonna put that thing right on your belly. And so we wanna lay flat on the ground, and the reason we want a tall item is so I can still see it with my peripheral vision. I can see the top of this, okay? And that's important because we're looking for a visual cue. And then I just wanna relax and breathe with my diaphragm. So intentionally breathe into your belly. Make these slow and complete breaths. And I just want you to watch how that bottle or whatever's on your belly is rising and falling. With any kind of breathing technique, you can do this by uh, counting the breaths or you can do it for a set number of minutes. Either way really works, but we're not pushing ourselves. We're not really trying to do anything that's super, super difficult. We're using our diaphragm which is a way to calm and relax the body. So don't make this any more stressful than it has to be. Uh, but the reason we're trying to do this with a visual cue is because that allows us to use two parts of our, two, two, two of our senses. We have the feel of the thing on our body and our diaphragm contracting and uh, relaxing. And we have the visual cue of that bottle going up and down. This is important to have two aspects of our, uh, of our senses because it allows us to create a deeper neuromuscular pathway. So the neuromuscular pathway is, you know, we get that thought, 
oh, I need to move or react or I need to move my body in some specific way. And when we get more senses involved in that neuromuscular pathway, it deepens that pathway and makes it a more thicker and more prominent pathway so that we do it more often. What we want, the end goal here, is to breathe diaphragmically all the time. We want to always breathe with our diaphragm to help calm and relax the body. All right. And when we use more senses to do it, it creates a deeper path or a stronger connection from the mind to the muscle. Very, very important. It's, think of it like this. If you walk through a field uh, with tall grass, you have to walk the same path a lot of times um, if you don't, it, to, to create a pathway. However, if we use multiple senses to create that pathway, it's you know, attuned to walking through that field that field and carrying a hole behind you. It's digging deep into the earth to create a pathway that is a lot more structured and uh, allows it us to find that pathway more often. And so it just allows us to breathe with our diaphragm more naturally, quicker than having to constantly always practicing diaphragmatic breathing. Uh, I practice diaphragmatic breathing really since I started learning about it four or five years ago. And I've constantly tried to push myself to breathe diaphragmatically naturally. And what happened, I mean, it takes a long time. And so the more senses we can use to adapt to this mental and physical stimulation, the better because it becomes more natural and we don't have to, uh, uh, it, it's just a lot easier to do it that way. And so what happens is over time, when we breathe with our diaphragm naturally, uh, it becomes like a superpower, believe it or not. It's a, a very akin to like Spider-Man's spidey sense, how he senses things before they happen. So when we naturally breathe with our diaphragm, this is the natural way we're intended to breathe, and it allows our body to calm down and relax. So when we do this all the time, we can tune in to when we're feeling a stressor. So it's not just, oh, my... My uh, coworker is not doing their work, so I have to cover for them. Or it's, oh, my partner is uh, yelling at me. Or whatever, the, or somebody cut me off in traffic. Whatever the stressor is, we not only have the mental ability to see that stressor before it rages into an emotion and we can no longer control it, but we can physically sense it as well because, ooh, when I'm stressed, I am not breathing with my diaphragm. I notice that my core becomes tighter, more constricted, and my chest breathing is enacted. And so it's a physical cue along with the mental cue of I know something's going on here so that I can react much, much better emotionally to whatever that stimulus may be. And so not only is breathing with our diaphragm the most natural way to breathe, but also it allows us to take control of our life. Like I said, breathing affects every aspect of our anatomy and the whole purpose of affecting every aspect of our anatomy is so that we can inc increase the quality of our life. This is what it's all about here, folks. And if we can control our emotional states before they reach that pivotal point to where we're, you know, it's, you know, I, I'm up to here, right here, right? Before we reach that point, if we can calm ourselves down, get back into our diaphragmatic breathing, or do whatever other tool that we need to in order to react that situation from our best self, we're gonna be so much better for ourselves, for the people we care about, and ultimately the world. That's what this is about. That's what I have for you today, a little bit of a long one. I hope you enjoyed it. Great to see you, thank you. Try this out. Like I said, it can become a superpower. Use your spidey sense using that diaphragmatic breathing. That's what I got for you today, guys. Thanks a lot. Take care. Remember, <laughs> with great power comes great responsibility.